Welcome back to Don's Life, welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. If you've been watching this channel for a while or you know anything about me, I like to make my vehicles unique and my wife's, Mrs. Don's Life's Escalade is no exception. So this vehicle right here, her 2022 Cadillac Escalade Sport Platinum, we are going to customize it further, do something I haven't really seen on any Cadillac Escalades, definitely not in person, and that's replacing this front emblem with an illuminated one. Let's go. Today I'm partnered with 404parts.com. We have an emblem that we are going to do a full start to finish install for you so you can see exactly what it entails. And ooh, I can't wait to see what it looks like after and functional, especially when it's dark outside. So let's take a closer look at what we're working with. So they sent over this emblem right here. It's gonna be pretty straightforward, I think, for the install. It's mostly plug and play because we connect it to either headlight, we can do the passenger side or we can do the driver's side. We'll figure that out in a moment, but it's gonna be all plug and play. The nice thing about 404parts.com is when you order a product such as this, anything that requires instructions, they will send you the necessary instructions so you can do the install. So I'll consult those to make sure we don't skip any steps, but we'll show how to put this on there safely. I've been working with 404parts.com for a long time now. I love that they deal with OEM parts and accessories for your vehicle. Now, I'm gonna proceed with this installation as a DIY tutorial. Remember, you can hire somebody if you don't feel comfortable doing this type of thing, but the first step is to pry off the old badge without damaging it. It's gonna be pretty straightforward. There's these little tabs, which you'll get a better look at here. If I take the plastic off, these little tabs need to come off of the old emblem. The old emblem on here is the blacked out one that I put on a while back from 404parts.com, but it should come off pretty easily. We don't wanna to have to remove the grill. That would be more involved, but I think we'll be okay if we just take our time. So let's start with removing that. Again, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, hire a professional, but the steps will be the same. Now, if we study the one we're gonna be putting on, you can see there's a little tab here that needs to be pushed down and that'll release it once I pry it out. If you look at how this is seated on here, it's actually two pieces. There is a back plate and there's this front piece here. If I put my pry tool behind where I see the tab going through in the back plate, I can expose that little tab I need to bend down. So I just take that little tab there, give it a little bit of a push. There we go. Just taking my time. This black stuff on here is just residue from a badge I took off in a different video. It's nothing coming off of here. Now that that's started, and I'll show you that nothing's breaking. Just a little bit of wiggling, some even pressure. It's sure nice when they just come out easily. I have one left, but I don't want these to go back in, so I'm gonna hang that one there. And then I'll hold this side and get the last one out. Oh, we got it. There we go. All the clips are intact. Now, on to the next step. Now the instructions do say that breaking some tabs is probably inevitable but as you can see, you can do it without breaking any as well. Now, if you look at the back of the new emblem, it's got a raised portion in the middle here for the wiring and probably some of the electronics require that area. So we need to make sure that we accommodate for that extra material. If we look at the back plate we're mounting to, it's flat and doesn't have an opening for that. So you do have to cut out a portion of this back plate. It won't matter if we ever wanted to get rid of this emblem and put the old one back on, as long as we leave the spots where it's held in place, as well as where the clips would need to go. Probably not a big deal to cut out of here. We'll figure that out in a moment. But before I do that, I wanna have a better look at it. So I'm gonna pop the hood open so we can see kind of from behind a little better. So I'm just gonna remove this plastic trim here, which feeds into the air intake and just kind of blocks the radiator area. Let's pull that out and then get a better look at this. Just have a little cap here you have to pry up first. Once the cap's up, then get underneath it. And then just remove all of these. We got a bunch of them. So what this has allowed me to see is we can see the backing plate in there and I can see all of the tabs that are holding the backing plate in place. 
Although I've got, you know, medium sized hands and medium wrists, I'm not fitting my hand in here. So I'm going to undo these six bolts right here that are holding the top of the grill. And then I should be able to pull that forward a little bit, get my hand in here and depress these tabs so I can pull this back plate off. So take these bolts off and then hopefully get my hand in there and get this freed up. All right, we've got the shroud off. I'm able to back off the grill now. I can get my hand in here. It's not the most comfortable thing, but because I can back it off now, I actually saw the back of this a little clearer and I think we can do the cutting from the front. Actually, I'm confident we can do the cutting from the front and not damage any of the wiring for the camera, which is down here. So I'm going to use the new emblem and these tabs as guides to how far it is to the edge of this rectangular piece here. So I'll just measure that out, figure out what this rectangle is, drill some holes with a drill bit. Then I'll use a cutting tool or a cutting wheel on my Dremel and I'll just cut that out. And then we should be able to clip it into place and then wire it up. Okay, we didn't even have to cut all the way through. We just had to cut through this back plate and I just had these holes drilled here just to make sure that I wasn't gonna go through and cut anything on the inside there. So I'll have to live with those holes there, not a big deal because we're gonna be drilling another hole here for the harness to go through. All right, we're ready to go. We can now clip the emblem in. We just got to fish this wire through. I'm going to connect it to the harness here and have this wire nice and secure and also hidden all the way to the back of the headlight right there where that clip is. So let's put this in. Put the locking tab on. No, I don't want my wiring to show through the grill here. So I found some existing wiring that is already tied up underneath this piece of plastic here. So what I'm going to do is run this alongside and just use some cable ties and secure it to that same wire that's there. I can feel it with my finger. It's in behind there. So I should be able to run this nice and clean out this area here and then to the harness we're connecting to. As you can see, no sign of wires and we'd have it tucked in right there. Now we can put all the bolts back, secure the grill. We can put the shroud back on and then we just have to hook up the harness. All right, we're in the home stretch. We're almost there. We just have to connect the harness and there's a little surprise I haven't told you about once we get this working. I'm sure you'll figure it out. But here is the harness we have to undo. We have to undo this passenger headlight here. I chose the passenger side and not the driver's side only because of the intake piping here. I didn't know if that would be in the way. It probably wouldn't based on the way I set this up, but I already ran it over to the passenger side. So we're going to undo this here. There is the red locking tab on the low beam headlight that we need to undo. It looks exactly like this one because this is a kind of piggyback unit. So once we take that one off, then we'll plug this one in there and you can see this is how far the tab has to come out for this to be disengaged. You have to bring it out at least this far, not just halfway to release this button in the back so it'll unlock. So we're gonna to have to take care of that, plug this in and then take that harness, plug it into this end here and then we should be able to turn the headlights on and that should light up. Now I never claimed this would be super easy, but what I am going to do is I'm going to carefully release this tab with a screwdriver. So you can see how far it's gone there. And then we can push this button, it's free to move. So as we push this button, we also have to wiggle off that harness. Now the trickiest part about this is actually the wiring hits the metal right here and makes this angle kind of difficult to deal with. 
So I'll do my best to demonstrate, but it is a tight fit. But once you get it off, it's pretty easy from there. Okay, we're just gonna tuck this up right here. So it's out of the way for a second. And now we're going to plug in the new one right in that spot. This one's a little easier to get in than that was to get off. Just kind of line it up from the top. It just wants to twist a little, which is annoying. And there we go, wait for it to click. So now it's in and then lock it. So that's done. Now we just need to hook up this piece. But first I wanna make sure all my wires are kind of tucked away the way that I want them to be. And now we can connect this here, lock it, and tuck it away to forget about it. Nice clean install. Okay, we are just about ready to test it. That's it there, a little dusty from all the work I was doing. You can see it sticks out a little more too, but that's because the sides illuminate as well as the crest in the front. But the surprise I had for you is it's actually animated. So it turns on when the headlights are on, the low beam, not the DRLs. The DRLs are usually on with the low beams anyway, but when it's just the DRLs on the side, this won't be on. It's gonna be on with the headlight circuit. That's the way it's designed. But let me give you a little sneak peek here before our montage. So I'm just gonna unlock the vehicle, have the headlights come on, and I'll give you a half animation. So there's one side, that's your preview. Now let's go to the montage. All right, there you have it folks. We have the new illuminated emblem on the Cadillac Escalade. I absolutely love it. I showed it to Mrs. Dawn's life. She loves it. She's gonna be the only Cadillac Escalade anywhere that I know of that looks like this and I think it's awesome. You definitely have to check out 404parts.com. Check out their selection, all their OEM parts and accessories for your vehicle. I'll leave a link in the video description below to their site and to this product here. And don't forget to use the code DAWNS404 to save yourself some money at checkout. So if you like today's install video, please hit that like button. Please consider subscribing. We'll talk to you next time.